Okay, Australia Wales. What a game of uh, two halves in the pool stage. Um, brilliant first half by Wales. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, brilliant second half by Australia, apart from the last, I would say, ten minutes. Uh, Wales were holding on at periods in the second half. Uh, Australia, much like Argentina, couldn't pull off the record comeback at a World Cup. But let's break the game down into the, the various phases of the game. There's, some, there's three key uh, TMO decisions. Uh, which I think have had an impact on the game as well, because I believe there should have been at least one, if not all three of them should have been yellow cards, uh, and that has affected the outcome of the game. We'll start with, with Dan Bigger's drop goal after a minute. Wales came out of uh, the gate like a bull in a china shop, and while the, I would say it's a bit early for a drop goal, three points after a minute of play, less than a minute of play, that's probably one of the quickest drop goals you'll see ever in uh, international. I think it's one of the quickest drop goals in a test match international after a minute. He did then go on to miss a penalty which is very unusual for Dan Bigger. Normally his kicking is really really good um, but it, it didn't actually affect the game. That drop goal covers for the miss penalty and uh, the Parks try that crossfield kick. Um, something they did in the Six Nations a couple of times they did it against England. Uh, they've done it again. A crossfield kick is, is so, a play out of the rugby league playbook I'll say that but with, with Sean Edwards being part of the coaching setup, you can see why they use the crossfield kick so effectively from a rugby league background. Comes into the Wells setup in the coaching setup. You, that's his blueprint there. He is a rugby league man through and through with, with his history in the game. And the crossfield kick is as good as a three man mispass, if not more accurate. And Hadley Parks, that is a brilliant try. And Bigger does convert a difficult conversion. Australia respond with their own crossfield kick from uh, Foley to Adam Ashley Cooper. Adam Ashley Cooper is a stalwart, a legend of the game, one of the best Australians of all time. Uh, again, crossfield kick, and again, it's as good as a three four man miss pass. Uh, would I say Adam Ashley Cooper's try is better than Hadley Park's? I would say they're about the same. The, the technique there to accurately kick that distance crossfield into the breadbasket of the player with two defenders around him to beat, uh, whereas Hadley Parks has to jump and out-jump uh, Corabiti for his. I think it's about equal. They're both brilliantly worked tries. That was the best bit of play of Australia in the first half, was that little spell, uh, with Adam Ashley Cooper getting the try and the Foley penalty. That was their best spell over a little eight-minute spell, and then things turn. Dan Bigger. There's a late hit on Dan Bigger by Hooper. Uh, he's passed the ball. It's late, it should have been a yellow. If we're going by what we've seen in the World Cup with the red card in the Uruguay-Georgia game, uh, which was red, that should have been at least a yellow. It's late and it's off the ball. Um, I have no idea how that was just a penalty. Uh, I have no idea how that was only just a penalty. Uh, the Karevi forearm on Patchell um, going into contact. This one is the borderline one. I'll discuss that in a minute. But Patchell does get a penalty in the meantime. Dan Bigger uh, uh, goes off injured. Uh HIA doesn't pass the HIA. Looks possibly a bit shoulder related as well. Uh, he is a brave fly half. He will get involved, and it was a great cover tackle to stop what looked like an Australian try on Corabiti, um, and it's cost him an injury. So that's a concern for Wales going forward that Dan Bigger is injured. It could just be safety first. It's a group stage. It's saving for the knockouts. But Patchell uh, slots a penalty in 32 minutes. Now Patchell's second penalty is a result of Karevi's forearm on him when he's making a tackle. Now. You could argue Patch was tackling too high, and his technique, if he goes slightly lower, uh, then it's less of an issue. I will say this, Karevi shows class by going up to Patch and apologising. Hooper, arguing with the referee, he does mention the tackle technique, but I will say this. Again, no yellow card. If it's a forearm to the throat head area, regardless if it starts in the chest and rolls up, it is still the high contact, the second incident in the first half, no yellow. And I'll get on to the Josh Adams high tackle as well, because there's a trend here of these three incidents going to the TMO and no action being taken. So I'll be really interested to see, especially with the Hooper incident, whether there is a site there, because we've seen retrospective action in this tournament so far. But looking at the, the previous game, where there is a red card for high contact, I am surprised none of these have got a yellow card. But Patchell slots the penalty, and that's where the game changes, because with Hoop have been arguing with the referee, Australia implode for the last five minutes of the first half, and this is where the game is won. Uh, the Will Genia miss pass that ends up being an interception pass by Gareth Davis for half a, 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 an individual try is brilliant. 
Uh, Will Gagnier, he's been intercepted earlier in the game. He'll get intercepted in the second half as well, an attempted intercept. It is telegraphed. He and Foley just did not control the game. When it was getting loose, and at times it was being played like sevens, when Wales were expansive, there was structure to it. When Australia were expansive, it was individualistic efforts by players. Um, and this would change in the second half by bringing Tawuma uh, and, and Smith on, but Foley and Genia did not have any control on that axis, and it was all individual plays and individual individuals going against a team, whereas a team go, it, it was just, there was lack of structure and cohesion. It was more individualistic from Australia, and that pass by Will Genia had been telegraphed earlier. They had had an attempted intercept. They would have a second attempted intercept in the second half. And it leads to Gareth Davis reading it brilliantly, and it's a brilliant try. Patchell's conversion. Patchell had a brilliant day with the boot today. Um, half time comes. Instead of it being a close game at half time, the scoreline 23 8. It's a little bit unfair on Australia, but that Will Genia intercept pass has come as a result of them losing focus after Karivi's penalty for that forearm. And that is the, that is the grey area. Is, the, is, the, is it the tackle technique? Is it the player? Karivi did say, look, I am protecting the ball. It's not intentional. I didn't intend to hit him in the head. But Hooper's response, while he's fair to say, look, it is tackle technique. What are we supposed to do when we go into contact? All teams have been given a directive from World Rugby. But I am surprised there was no yellow for that, though, if they had been given this directive. Enough whining about that decision. It did actually have an impact on the game. That is actually where the game has been won. Half time comes. Same as the first half. Patch will drop goal in 43 minutes. Um, they've had three drop goal attempts in the game. They've scored two of them. Um, and that ticks the scoreboard over. So they've decided to keep the scoreboard ticking over, which is something teams don't do enough of. Uh, they don't take some of these three-point opportunity, be a penalty or, or drop goals anymore. The drop goal is a dying art, but Wales seem to have resurrected it. But then they bring Bernard Foley off, and this is where the game changes momentum-wise for Australia. The Hale Petty try, Tawuma, Tawuma, uh, Tumua, let me get his name right, Foley, uh, Foley's replacement at fly half, brings flair, but also a bit of structure with that flair. He interplays with Haley Petty and others, Karivi uh, and, and, and Korobiti, to create a great, great try on 46 minutes. The Hooper try comes after phase after phase after phase after phase of line-out, maul, ruck, and they decided to keep the game tight, and this suited Australia. They decided to go from expansive, semi-structured to, we'll keep it tight, we'll truck it up, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it simple. And it worked because Hooper gets his try in 61 minutes, and Tamua converts. Also, Tamua had a penalty. Possibly should have gone for the corner, because now the uh, Australian pack had the dominance, but they took the penalty, and that, I think, is another decision that they are going to regret. They should have gone for the corner and, and, taken, and tried to go for the drive over try, because at this point, Australia, in the tight and now starting to be in, also in the loose, were all over Wales. Wales are holding on at this point. Now, it's during this period of play that Josh Adams has a high tackle and no yellow card as well. While it's not the most vicious high tackle, it is still contact around the head. No yellow. So that's three incidents with, with high, high shots where there's no yellow. Where, again, I refer to the previous game of the day, the Uruguay-Georgia game. There's a red card for something possibly less in, uh, you know... Uh, Accidental contact with the head, red card. For poor tackle technique, there are three three periods here where there should have been yellow cards that have had an impact on the game. Now, the Hooper and Karevi penalties against them have led to points. But they should have... One of the, Hooper should have definitely got a yellow. Josh Adams, okay, it, it hasn't led to points directly at that point, but has he? if he gets a yellow card, that also affects the outcome of the game. Now, Karivi doesn't leave the field, he's not hurt, okay? It's not the worst high tackle, but if we're going by the directive that World Rugby has sent out, there should have been three yellow cards in this game. The Patchell penalty is enough to get Wales over the line, and they regain a bit of composure in the last 10 minutes. They, they get some turnover ball, and the last 10 minutes, Australia do sort of lose their focus yet again. So decision-making by Australia with the Tamua penalty, which should have gone for the corner, they've gone for the posts. While he slots the penalty, it doesn't give them the lead. They're still behind, and that gives Wales the opportunity to go for the corner, go for the posts, and keep control of the scoreboard, which they do with the patch or penalty. Wales were the better team, I will say that, but those three yellow card cards that weren't given, those three high contacts are talking points because the directive from World Rugby and the fact that in the previous game on the same day there's been a red card for a high contact, the lack of consistency and going to the TMO, it's the interpretation of the TMO because on the Hooper late hit, the referee 
misses it. He's told by the TMO, at which point you assume that should be a yellow card if it's gone to TMO and the referees have missed it. The Karivi forearm is the grey one, which is a, a decision that a lot of people would argue it's fair to call it a penalty. Could it be a yellow card? Should it have been a penalty in the first place? I've seen it on, tw uh, on social media. That one is a debatable one, depending on interpretation. I think Karivi showing respect to Patrick and apologised to him was, was uh, good credit to Karivi there. And the Welsh players not making a, uh, a big meal out of it. They weren't even aware it was a penalty until, the, again, the TMO has come in. There was no um, reaction from the Welsh. So it wasn't the dirtiest one in the world. And I've seen plenty of players last year. That's completely legal. There is no retrospective action against that. But his forearm does ride up. It's unfortunate, but it does lead to penalty. It does lead to points for the opposition. The Josh Adams one, again, that's a 50-50 call. But all three of these outcomes have affected the game. On another day, if we're going by the book that that World Rugby has brought down, those are three yellows. And the consistency is, is what's bugging me in this because we've seen missed calls in almost every game. Two red cards, which were straight reds, on the field, but other calls leading to retrospective action from the sighting commissioner. I would expect Hooper to get a sight for that. Uh, Josh Adams and Karibi, I think they were dealt with on the field. They are debatable whether the directive is being followed. Wales deserved the win. Australia, after Foley goes off, gained some control. I think Tamua is the fly half going forward. Uh, but Wales need to put in an, an 80 minute performance. That's where they were lacking. There were no tries in the second half of Wales, only six points. And this is something that, while they got over that in the Six Nations eventually and eventually scored tries in both halves and kept the scoreboard ticking over, their lack of scoring uh, in one half or the other is a concern. Uh, and that's something they can work on. How badly injured is Dan Bigger? We shall see. Um, but Australia, the same weaknesses that were shown up in the Fiji game were there. Uh, lack of control of ball or contact, turnovers, decision making, and also a bit of foul play as well. Uh, again, discipline is a massive problem. But I'm going to leave that there. Really entertaining game. At times it was like watching sevens in the first half and for periods of the second half. Very open, end to end. Wales were better in the loose flowing play. They seemed to have structure. Australia, for the most part, seemed to be more individualistic efforts, lack of structure, and that's something to do with the coaching. The Israel Folau argument, I don't think Israel Folau being on the field would have helped Australia today. I really don't. I said that in the first game, I'll say it in this game. There were, more, there were bigger issues with Australia than just one player who's been a naughty boy on social media. There are bigger issues with the Australian side. Wales, I think, did deserve the win because of their defence in the second half when they were under the cosh and especially how they recovered in that last 10 minutes. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your comments below. If you disagree on those yellow card calls or non-yellow card calls, those, those TMO decisions, this is where the debate is, because there's no consensus. But if World Rugby have come out with a directive saying we want to cut out high contact, there will be punishment, why are these three players... Two of them, I can see why penalty would, would suffice, but I've seen yellow cards given for less. Hooper, how he's got away with a yellow without getting a yellow, I have no idea. But I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.